Whenever discussing the benefits of creating AI agents, two things always comes up. The ability for them to create plans and complete actions, normally through tool calling, and the ability for AI agents to improve over time. Memory for AI agents is the foundation to unlocking this feature. So that is what we're gonna cover in this lesson of the AI for Agents for Beginners course. We will look at the different AI agent memory types, how to store memory for AI agents, and how to build AI agents that improve over time through the use of memory. We're gonna cover these topics from concept to code in this short video, but if you want a more in-depth explanation, including translations, or to run the code yourself, head to the link of the course above and below this video. And if you have any more questions about this topic, or if you want to meet other people learning to build AI agents, head over to our dedicated Discord channel here. But what were we talking about again? Oh yeah, AI agent memory. So let's get started. Let's start by defining what agent memory is. In the previous lesson of this course, it made a short preview in what we were talking about, the difference between the types of context in the world of context engineering. I like to think of memory as like the electricity that powers the core features of why you build AI agents in the first place. So what are those features? First is the ability to be reflective, meaning how to learn from past actions and outcomes. Being interactive, so how to maintain context over an ongoing conversation. Being proactive, which is how to respond and anticipate users' needs based on historical data that we give the agents access to. And lastly, being autonomous, so that agents can act more independently based on long-term knowledge without having to ask users constantly for input and feedback if it's not actually needed. But that covers why memory is important. But there's actually many different types of memory. And in the written course, we cover seven different types. But for this video, we're gonna only look at just four. The first two you might have already heard when working with AI agents. That is short-term memory and long-term memory. Short-term memory covers a single conversation and its context of the current chat. This is great because if a user asks, how much does a cost, flight cost to Paris, which is absolutely lovely at this time, and then asks, what are the available hotels there? The agent knows that there is Paris and doesn't have to ask what the user means by there. Now, long-term memory is how to keep information that lasts across multiple conversations. This is important when we're talking about data that is connected to users' preferences, feedback, past interactions, or just anything you want to keep stored over a longer time period. So if a user is known to enjoy outdoor activities and luxury hotels, which sounds amazing as right now, the agent can make these recommendations based on this knowledge going forward in the future bookings. The next memory type is entity memory. This is memory that gets extracted from conversations as, you guessed it, entities. This means when a user is set talking about how much they enjoy their trip to Paris, the agent can extract entities like Paris as a city, Eiffel Tower as a tourist attraction, and Le Chat Noir as a restaurant. This could be an important information for future bookings, and especially when we're looking for similar items, which is what we're talking about in the last memory type, structured rag. This is taking these entities, and instead of looking for similarities in a database like in traditional RAG, it uses this data for direct queries of structured data stores, which decreases the room for inaccurate data to be retrieved, and this is a good way for when data accuracy is absolutely critical. But that's enough about memory in a general sense. How do we actually give this information to our AI agent? There is generally two different methods to storing and retrieving memory for AI agents. First, there are specialized tools and frameworks that you can use. The one that we will use, show in this course is MEM0. MEM0 allows us to easily add, modify, and delete memories as it adds a memory layer between our AI agent and a database where they are being stored, which for the example we'll show will be Azure AI Search. But MEM0 supports a wide range of databases. The other is just storing these memories directly in the database and using RAG to retrieve the information. You can use structured RAG to make sure that queries come back with accurate information. For example, if a user has a food allergy, you don't want your AI agent to recommend restaurants that isn't accommodating to that. Putting this all together, in order to have our AI agent self-improve, 
We need to give them instructions to identify the valuable information that is worth storing, summarize that information in a way that will be good to recall later, store that in a knowledge base so that the agent can use it later, and then lastly, retrieve that information when a user starts a new query that is related to that stored memory. So let's see all this in action by looking at a code sample. Okay, hello everyone. Now we're here at the code sample. Again, this code sample is a part of the GitHub repo of this course, which you can find at the link above and below the video. So you can test this out, play with it, break it, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, this example, we're gonna use uh, mem0 uh, as in terms of the management of memory, semantic kernel in terms of creating the agent, and then Azure AI search in terms of storing the memory, as well as what we're gonna be storing in this example, which is uh, hotel data. So we're gonna be booking hotels based on users' preferences. That's the use case. Uh, we've got some you know, brief explanation of how this all works in the notebook, so you can kind of check out that. Let me just kind of hit some of the highlights for you. Um, <clears throat> first thing is obviously get your environment variables set. And we also will be using Azure AI search and you can find a setup chapter on how to do that within the course. We're gonna create two different indexes within the uh, Azure AI search. So this will have the hotel information and then our memories uh, that will be stored for the agent to uh, use based on the preferences of the user. Uh, and this is all gonna be able to set up in terms of uh, creating some fields that will be searchable. And this is gonna be important when we are using mem0 because the agent essentially is going to query this database uh, and find that information based on the user preference. So user comes in, tells them what you like about hotels, and the next time user comes in a week later and says, hey, I wanna book a hotel somewhere, we should automatically, at least the agent knows, based on the preferences, these are gonna be hotels the user kind of likes based on that stuff. So we need these fields to be able to search on. And then there's some, uh, you know, just some data that we have. Again, you can play around with this, change it if you want. Uh, all of the hotels that we're gonna to add to AI search. And then we're gonna make this connection between mem0 and AI uh, search. Basically, essentially, uh, talking about this, like the LLM that we're gonna use, the vector store and the embedder. Uh, so using the embeddings model to populate the database if needed. Uh, and then, you know, it's always good to do some tests. So th given this, this uh, notebook is for educational purposes only. So we also are very <clears throat> open about some of the logging and stuff. So you can kind of like see it all working, uh, but we're just gonna do some testing, right? We're gonna have these test messages, you know, blah, about the user and the, the preference there. And what's really nice, I think, about Mem0 is that we have these like simple uh, methods we can call like this dot add or get all, and essentially this dot add is adding all the messages that we're gonna have. And this dot get all is gonna get all the memories for the user if we want it. Uh, so really nice, again, now we know that this is this connection is kind of working. Uh, then we're gonna have this travel booking plugin, which to be honest, you might see the code, I might change the name because it's not the best, uh, it doesn't do actual booking, but it searches uh, and manages the plugins based on the user's travel preferences. So there's different functions within the kernel. Uh, so the search history based on the you know, criteria, like amenities, each hotel has a tag there. So we'll also pull that in. Then the function also stores the user's travel preferences. So this is also gonna be adding this. So again, using this like dot add from M0 and storing the preference, so store preference. So we're gonna return that so we can see how it all works. And then uh, getting all the store preferences. Again, so once a user asks a query about booking in the hotels again, the agent should, oh, let me look at your preferences first and then respond versus asking about the preferences. We don't want that as a user experience. So take a look at all that stuff. Uh, we're gonna create the agent as we normally do in uh, most of this uh, course, you know, the examples here through semantic kernel and adding the plugin. Then we have some instructions. Again, this is going to be where we, you know, just define the workflow for the agent. Uh, you know, when a user asks for help, first search the memories. So, hey, call this tool if you want to. It store any users' uh, new preferences. So, using the store user preferences, and then um, you know, just making sure to retrieve all that. So, based on like hotels, diary retrieval restrictions, we just want to make it clear there. Uh, we added some hard coding here because we're not going to do anything special on user IDs, unfortunately. So, we're just going to say, hey, every time, just to make sure this is <clears throat> again going to be operational uh, for you for educational purposes. Use this Sarah Johnson one two three as the user ID, um, but again, you can play around with this and change it. You can even use it for your own use case, maybe find a way to pull in your own user ID data. Then we give it some examples, always good in terms of making effective agents. Uh, you know, users asking about this, search memories, these are the type of queries that you would like to, to make. Uh, so if we go down to the conversation here, uh, we have this user message, 
This is Sarah. She's going to just tell us some things about what she's booking and a little bit about her preferences as well around budget, romance, uh, destinations, all of that stuff. And essentially, <clears throat> this is a lot of code just to make this look good for you. But basically, we have this uh, nice little conversation. Sarah, uh, the, you know, budget and stuff like that. And then uh, what the agent will do, again, because we give you the instructions, it's actually going to start searching for the memories first um, after it's stored all these things because then it's like, oh, I need to make, like we put in the instructions, I'm going to make a recommendation and I need to search for that. Uh, and, you know, you know, we obviously have some preferences that she's made, romantic destinations, fine din dining, all this. Again, this is kind of using that entity memory, kind of pulling that in from what she's written here, natural language. But also, hey, there might be some other things that we already know about Sierra, but we don't. So uh, nothing comes back. We're just going to make these recommendations. going to be at least within budget. And hopefully, again, you know, her preference is there. Then the user comes in later on and asks, tells us about, uh, you know, this hotel. Sounds, picks this one. Vegetarian and nut allergy. Uh, so hopefully now we will get this, you know, stored in terms of our preferences, in terms of the, like what the user is asking later on. And then we can go in, um, we can even view this. We have some, uh, basically some things around viewing uh, the MEM0 store. So play around with that so you can see what we actually stored. And then uh, what we're gonna play as Mimic here is now that Sarah's coming back, right? She's got, uh, you know, weeks later, she wants to do a, a vacation and her husband's playing another vacation. Like they're just looking for a good hotel. Maybe this is a button, right? It's not really, it doesn't have to be a chat interface. Uh, but if we go in now, and we're gonna simulate this. We're gonna see that uh, there's some searching here based on you know the preferences or restrictions, location, amenities, budget, all of these things that could be important. And then it says, so based on your, your preferences and even, you know, we tell the agent to say exactly what they're looking for here, uh, what they've kind of pulled in. Um, you know, hey, <clears throat> which is good, you know, agent, agentic practice, some transparency for your user. Then uh, we have the hotels, the reasons why they were selected. And then what's really nice about this agent, I think is uh, really good is that, hey, we found some other hotels that could be good, uh, but it's over budget. Uh, they don't really align with your preferences. It's a nice thing to have here, right? Because preferences change. And another thing about Mem0 is that you can delete preferences and modify or update them. Um, but you know, this is a, this is a nice good practice to have. Um, and then, you know, we have some tests here that you can play around with again on, uh, you know, let's have the, the preferences and pulling them in and seeing what happens there. And then we can also do some, just some basic search on these memories. Uh, so we can search on that and pull in that information. So do check this example out, see how the, uh, it's running on your side, as well as, you know, playing around with memories and storage to find out new information. That wraps up our lesson on memory for our AI agents. Check out the written lesson at the link above and below this video for more information about the topic and see you in the Discord channel here to meet other people just like yourself trying to build the agentic future and get your questions answered.